When I was little, my favorite show was Thomas the Tank Engine. I made sure to watch every episode of it. Even when I got older, the show still had a special place in my heart. When my nephew Spencer was born, I shared my love for Thomas with him. I gave him Thomas the Tank Engine based presents for every birthday and Christmas. I now understand how weird I was acting back then, and I would have kept this obsession up if not for one disturbing incident. It all started three years ago. Spencer's sixth birthday was approaching, and I was looking for a good gift for him. I should mention that I have a habit of buying gifts a month in advance, so when it was time to buy Spencer's present, I had a great idea. Spencer hadn't watched a single episode of Thomas the Tank Engine, not the original version anyway, so I figured a DVD of it would be the best option. I went online and looked for it, and found one on Craigslist that was being given away for free. All I had to do was send the guy my home address and he'd send it to me. I would never do this under normal circumstances. The last time I bought a DVD from Craigslist, it was a bootleg version of Aliens, instead of the real thing. However, money was tight back then, and I really wanted a DVD for Spencer. So against my better judgment, I got it. When it arrived on my doorstep, I was surprised by the poor packaging. It was wrapped in brown paper and tape. I guessed that the DVD was hand-delivered. I unwrapped the package and inspected the DVD. The box and cover looked legit. The disc also had a real-looking cover, instead of just the title written in Sharpie. So all that was left to do was play the DVD. I turned on my desktop and popped the DVD into the disc player. Everything looked good, but then I checked the episode list. The DVD contained six episodes. The first five episodes were the first in the series. The sixth episode, however, seemed unfamiliar to me. The episode was titled Edgar's Revenge. I've seen every episode of Thomas Tank Engine, and I've never heard of Edgar's Revenge. Also, who's Edgar? I thought that I was scammed again. To be sure, I decided to watch the episode. I've heard TV shows having lost episodes. Since SpongeBob SquarePants was pretty good, I figured why not. I will regret that decision for as long as I live. The episode began with Thomas chatting with Percy. Thomas was telling Percy about the coal he was going to deliver to a factory south of Sodor. When Percy heard this, he looked worried. He asked how Sir Topham Hat could send another engine down that route. There was a railroad on the south side of Sodor that was believed to be haunted. Every time an engine went down those tracks, they'd be pushed off of them by an unknown force. Unfortunately for Thomas, he had to go down those tracks. Apparently Sir Topham Hat wasn't superstitious. Every time an engine is found on its side next to the tracks, He'd say there was something wrong with the tracks. But every engine knew the truth. The episode then showed a flashback with the narrator telling the story. Years ago, there was an engine named Edgar. One day, he was assigned to bring logs to a shipping port south of Sodor. However, a storm was going to hit that area soon. Despite Edgar's concerns, Sir Topham Hatt made him go anyway. Edgar was going through a clearing when the storm hit. A bolt of lightning then hit him, electrocuting the engine. Edgar screamed in agony as his face began to melt. He then came to a stop and died on the tracks. It took several days for Edgar's body to be recovered. It's believed that Edgar's ghost was responsible for those accidents. Percy begged Thomas not to go down those tracks. But Thomas, being the diligent engine he was, went anyway. The next scene showed Thomas driving through a clearing. The sun was setting and the engine looked nervous. He was frantically looking around for Edgar's ghost. After a while, Thomas began to calm down. He was starting to think that the hauntings were just accidents when he saw something. 
A smoky mass was forming beside Thomas. The smoke then materialized into a train. Thomas looked at the engine in horror as he realized it was Edgar's ghost. His face was hideously deformed and his eyes were completely white. Patches of paint were missing and he was wailing in agony. Edgar started ramming against Thomas, his screams of pain switching to anger. Edgar then started yelling about how Sir Topham Hatt killed him, and then he must pay for what he did. With one final blow, Thomas was knocked right off the train tracks. Edgar sped off, laughing maniacally before disappearing. A few days later, a group of people retrieved Thomas and the coal. He was mumbling under his breath with pure terror on his face. I sat there in shock as the credits rolled. What bothered me the most was that it didn't look like a fake episode. I kid you not, Edgar's Revenge looked as if it was made by the same people that created the series. I looked at the episode's title on the internet. Unfortunately, I didn't find any information about it. I did, however, find something else. There was a news article dating back to the 1930s about a tragedy in the UK. A freight train was found in the clearing with its entire crew murdered. One of the crew members killed everyone before disappearing somewhere. The killer's name was Edgar. I'm still not convinced that the episode was fake. Whoever the creator was, at least I now know what inspired that nightmare. I destroyed the wretched DVD and threw the remains in the trash. After that, I went to buy a DVD from an actual store and never told anyone about Edgar's Revenge. I'm not sure if there are any more copies, but if so, I hope they never see the light of day. Have you ever heard of Thomas the Tank Engine? If you've been around little kids between the ages of 2 and around 7 or so, I'm sure you have. My son adored Thomas so much that he could name every single train, knew what color they were, and the number they had painted on them. I was glad when I heard that he was coming to visit me over the summer, but I had a ton of work to do, so I bought him a Thomas DVD. The cover looked innocent enough. What was also interesting was that Thomas was smiling and little wooden children were waving their arms out of the windows in his coaches. The DVD was called Thomas and the Children. He was so excited to see the DVD that right off the bat, he pleaded with me to pop it in the DVD player. I went to work while he watched it. After a few hours, he came into my office looking as pale as a sheet. His voice seemed very weak. Are you okay? I asked. I touched his head and noticed that his temperature had gone up. Why did Thomas kill the children? My heart sank like a stone. But I soon brushed it off. I'm sure Thomas didn't kill the children. I reassured him. Now you need to rest and take some medicine. I gently nudged him towards his room. Come on now. After putting him to bed, I got curious as to what he had seen. I popped in the DVD and began to watch the episode play. It seemed normal enough. The episode began as Thomas was told to take a group of children to the seaside by the instructions of Sir Topham Hatt. I noticed something was wrong. There was no narrator in the episode. The episode then showed Thomas picking up the little wooden children and showed every single one of them climb on board. Then there was a scene with him, zooming down the rails, like he always did, and the kids were cheering. But up ahead, Bertie the bus was stuck on the level crossing, moaning for someone to help him. This is when the episode got strange. Bertie stared at Thomas in fear, but Thomas just smiled and sped up. 
He laughed and the kids were crying, with tears coming down from their wooden faces. Immediately Thomas crashed into Bertie, and pieces from both of them flew everywhere. Usually by now the narrator would say, and luckily no one was hurt. The episode then showed what happened inside the coaches. Wooden limbs were broken off. What looked like actual blood had been splattered everywhere. We see brief shots of their heads ripped off and tears painted upon their faces. Everything went to static. After that, I felt myself boiling over with anger. What sicko would create something that messed up for little kids? Then I paused the tape. Messages started to appear on the screen like kill, obey, multiply, and die. I watched the static and more different messages flash on the screen. And on the bottom, one of them said, R.I.P. Thomas. I threw the accursed thing in the trash after breaking it in half. I would not expose my child to any more of that trash. Before going to bed myself, I checked him. He was happily asleep and snoring, clutching his teddy. I had nightmares from this. One where the children came into my room, but they were lifelike and as tall as a normal person. Their twisted forms grabbed my limbs and pulled me apart while I heard that blasted train laughing. Now I have woken up covered in blood, knife in hand, and I'm afraid to check my son's room. <laughs>